coming to you on a Friday on my back deck. How about that? First time I did a show on the back deck since last summer. It's warm enough today. It's beautifully warm. I love it. I like the warmth. And it's not too bad. It's a little bit cloudy. There might be, you know, some blue here and there. It's going to be nice the next week. I love it. Good morning. Here's my coffee. Cheers. And I'm going to bring you a beautiful article today on a Friday. It's called The Blessedness of Believing from the Unsearchable Riches of Course. The virtue and blessedness of believing is clearly set forth by the Apostle Paul. His letters portray its power, his life, its stirring triumph. His pen, as no other, has made an indelible impression on the heart and mind of the believer. In proof, let us look at an introductory expression of it. Yet now, apart from law, a righteousness of God is manifest, being attested by the law and the prophets, a righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing. For there is no distinction, for all sinned and are wanting of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. A righteousness of God is manifest and attested by the law and the prophets. Surely an array of testimony which places it in a clear light and beyond all shadow of doubt. Indeed, the sacred oracles overflow with the beauty of it. But it has seemed so far away. Paul, however, gives it life and meaning as he so finely adds to the thought. Yet a righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing. Now in very truth and radiant grace, it comes near to the heart of man, Jesus Christ's faith. What a channel for the stream of God's grace. How far beyond our own frail faith. Our righteousness is a broken reed. Of what avail are ethics to give life and peace? There has been but one life, one faith, eminently pleasing to God. He alone could say, Christ himself, I am always doing what is pleasing to him. His faith, not ours, brings to our heart the deep sense of God's righteousness. And here is the glory of it. <clears throat> it is for all and on all who are believing. What a gift! Could we wish for anything better with which to commence the life of faith? Note also the exquisite equality of blessing. There is no distinction for all sinned and are wanting of the glory of God. There is the all in each clause, but the blessing right here and now is for all who are believing. It is, is it so simple and so easy as that? Well, that is God's way and manner of entrance into blessing. <clears throat> and there is a grandeur in it. For to go on and on believing God as he reveals himself in the word of his grace is to experience great things. Not only is there joy and peace in believing, but a rare knowledge and understanding. Paul, in writing of this faith of yours in the Lord Jesus and that for all the saints, refers also to the transcendent greatness of his power for us who are believing. This is the one great faith of the Ephesian epistle, which so links us with the one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. In the permanent power of these three alls, there constantly flows to the heart a joy and peace in believing. To believe in the divine supremacy solves so much that is, that is otherwise perplexing. Therefore, to see that God is over all and through all and in all of the, of the affairs of life is to experience in some measure an understanding of his thoughts and ways. We shall notice how human proposals are subject to God's disposals. Abraham believes God and is chosen as a progenitor of the people whose amazing destiny will one day thrill the world. Joseph's brethren sell him into Egypt, yet by this very, very means they are all kept alive. And again, 
as Pharaoh seeks to diminish these people, God multiplies them. Indeed, the Hebrew scriptures are full of illustrations displaying God's own way of dealing with men. In all these, there is an exactness and the equity of judgment truly divine. The ills of life are seen to serve purposes of God. But where some things seem a mystery, it is well to leave, that, leave them. Leave them with God, as matters not to be probed by our poor knowledge. And this is where the blessedness of believing comes in. In peace or in war, we take up Eli's language. It is the Lord. Let him do what, he, what seemeth him good. There goes an airplane. Fuck, I haven't heard, a, heard an airplane in forever. Somewhere there's an airplane. Usually there's fly, planes flying over here 24-7, but the world's shut down, so there's no planes. Last year when I sat out here, there was one every five minutes. <laughs> I love it. Okay, it is well to remember that at all times, God has his own ends to serve. He moves in ways so different to human estimates. Knowing the end in view, he acts accordingly. It is not given to human beings happily for them, for otherwise life would be intolerable. To foresee or to predict, to any large extent, the un unfolding course of events... In one phase, men seem to have been right. In another, they seem to have been wrong. Then, again, a few years later, when the perspective of time has lengthened, all stands in a different setting. For believers, however, in all contingencies of life, there is the solace of joy and peace in believing. And what a difference this makes! The heart is stilled amid the strife of tongues, and the Spirit rejoices in God our Savior. Daily is he praised for his loving kindness and for his thought upon us for good. Content with that, he gives the, an hourly resting in the wisdom of his will. Man's day need not disturb us. We look to the great beyond of the day of Christ and the day of God. And in those wondrous days, things rare and lovely will capture the vision and enrich the whole being. Our blessedness then lies in believing God as he unfolds himself in the word of his grace. For in this word, word, uh, in this word is wisdom which will rightly shape our lives to his glory and our good. And in exercise of believing God, there will be found the highest motives for well-spent life. But far too many are influenced by what they see and hear around them. And so become creatures of environment. Faith would save us from this as it did Abraham. The worthy patriarch believes God and is lifted out of the above of and, be, and above his environment. <clears throat> Happy are we. Should God so lay his hand upon us, and it behooves us to take Paul's word to, words to heart. Faithful is the saying, and I am intending you to be insistent concerning these things, that those who have believed God may be concerned to stand for ideal acts. These things are ideal and ben beneficial for humanity. Titus 3, 8. Opening in a similar way, there is yet another quotation which stresses the value of belief. Faithful is a saying, and worthy of all welcome, that we rely on the living God, who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of those who believe. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. That God is the Savior of all mankind gives much point and power to the believer's reliance on Him. It inspires God's children with the best of motives for kindness, kindliness toward their fellow men. They see in them not just what they are now. It may be to bear with, but something also of what they will become. Even that rare something will spring to life and being when they are truly subject to the Son of God. When with clear vision they see and understand. God is the great leveler. See how distinctions vanish in his wise judgment. Note how 
the scripture locks up all together under sin. And to what intent? Paul goes on that the promise out of Jesus Christ's faith may be given to those who are believing. Galatians 3.22 Believing sinners become saints. And how really so if they live as, become, as becomes those who would claim such dignity? A colored preacher once said, oh, this is done back in the day, so A. Enoch wrote this. But I, I, can, I think that's kind. He said a colored preacher once said, they call them colors back in the day. And I, I won't go into detail about that. I could say either or, but that's funny how he wrote this. And this is back in what year? Let me look, 1943. So A. Enoch called him a colored preacher. He once said, "These there are two parts in the gospel. The first part is the believing it, and the second part is behaving it. There's one, there is a word much in use today with the psychologists, the word function. Does our believing truly function? Does it work or operate in our lives as scripture assures us it will? There is not a man or woman of God who looking back on life could say it did not. And if not in a way open to all, then in some manner clearly known to ourselves and none the less real. Our belief has more than justified itself in ways wonderful to co contemplate. God has been our environment and in no circumscribed fashion. Rather, he has brought us to a large place above things of sense and transient feeling. Even to where, as Paul says, you are enriched in everything in him, in all expression and all knowledge. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. This is awesome stuff. I love it. And I hope you do too. The writer overheard this question. What do you make of life? The answer given was, well, it is just made up of what you put into it. Life, however, is far better for us if we see that it is made up of what God puts into it. Such insight makes all the difference. Just to learn, as a preacher once did at a conference, that there is a struggling faith and a resting faith. Two, struggling faith or a resting faith. What do you have? Are you at peace with God? Well, that's a resting faith because you rest in the faith of Jesus Christ. If you have a struggling faith, then you're struggling with yourself and you try to find faith in yourself. Big difference. One outcome of believing God is tranquility of spirit. And what an asset at the present time. Of course. True rest is as, an unchanging as, as unchanging as God himself. Like him, it rises above all earthly things. It is a secret, abundant, without a regret or wish. There is then no end to the blessedness of believing. A wealth of discovery awaits our approach. And blessed, be, and blessed be God, the event tide of life is no bar to riches of experience or to quality of testimony. Our believing, however, will have, have more point and more value if we fully see our freedom from the law. Our initial blessing is apart from law. And so it is the whole of it. We are surrounded enough by the enactments and laws. By enactments and laws, yeah. How many laws is there out there? The world is full of laws. But we are apart from law with Jesus Christ's faith given to us in measure. In measure that's so beautiful. We could just get a spark of our Lord's faith. Just a spark. Ding! And that's enough to sustain a believer in this present time in this present wicked eon. Got it? It is therefore an exquisite relief to live as becomes the atmosphere of our celestial citizenship. And what more spiritual and suitable expression as this high altitude can we find than in Paul's prison epistles? And in all his letters, our precepts and counsels of, of a simple and noble perfection. He is truly the apostle, herald, and teacher for the blessing of the nations and for the true edification of the body of Christ. Blessed are they who needing no loud sign of reason or felt proof 
or voice divine, believing love and loving do not sigh. Believing because they love and ask not why, but on his wisdom rest they all day long. And read his words and are refreshed and strong. Through all his works his thought at every turn. Through all his word his grace and truth discern. Oh wow, that was powerful. I laugh at it because it's just like I laugh in spirit. I laugh in spirit. I laugh in joy and thanksgiving to God for his grace and love. And I'm able to even share it. And I get a chance to be out here on my deck. It's not so bright out here, but whoopee ding dong. You heard what I said. You heard what I read. Lord willing, you heard what I read and heard what, what the words that God has given me to share with you. I love you all. Have a wonderful Friday.